to my channel. I am Andrea and you're very welcome to Beyond the Pink Door. Now if you're new to my channel I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. This is my channel where I show what I'm making, what I've made and a few little tutorials along the way. So I live in the west of Ireland. Um, I am five foot tall so I'm a petite sewist. My measurements are in the about me on this channel. I know a lot of people ask me about size and height and everything and I think it's really really handy if you know somebody's size, not from a nosy point of view but from a I think I'd like to make one of those and she looks around the same size as me and sometimes you know I can see somebody and think they're the same size as me but they're actually six inches taller or whatever so I think it's really really handy to know somebody's measurements. Now not everybody's com comfortable in writing their measurements down. I don't have a problem because I, I find it really really handy. So generally when I have made something I will tell you what size I've made it in, what problems I had with the pattern or you know maybe sometimes I don't have any pattern problems with patterns at all, whatever adjustments I've made and yeah so when I do one of these videos, I link in the description box below the links to whatever fabrics I use, whatever patterns I've used. And sometimes I will forget because I do tend to kind of waffle on a little bit and sometimes I forget about what I'm talking about and I forget to link them. So if there's anything I ever forget to link, just ask me in the messages. So the description box for people who are just new to YouTube, when you see the description of this video below, there's a little arrow over to the right, you hit the arrow and the description box pops down and that's where you'll find the links and the information or whatever. So today's video is about this dress that I've been making and I must say I really really enjoyed making this dress. I've had the pattern for ages. It is Simplicity 8015. There's four different versions and I made version C. So as I say, I've had this pattern for quite a while. I've been dying to make it. I love a denim dress. I bought denim dresses over the years and just never got them to fit me right. So um, I bought this lovely denim. It's a denim chambray. I bought it from the Crafty Studio. I will add the link to it down below. It's a chambray so it's really, really soft. It's really comfy. There's a little bit of a stretch to it, so it's not a really rigid, hard denim, which I find to wear because I'm small. So before I made it, obviously, I had a look at my measurements on the back, and I was coming in in a measurement, I was coming in in the size about a 14 to 16. So generally on the big four patterns, I make a 14. I will use the shortening lines to obviously shorten it in places and sometimes it's quite it's quite hit and miss but I, I like simplicity patterns I'm, I'm quite used to them and as well as looking at the measurements on the back I also look at the pattern pieces and I have a look at the finish measurements and then I make my decision from there. I decided to go for a 10 on the shoulders shoulders <laughs> a 12 on the bust and I went for a 14 on the hips and just judging by the finish measurements that was what I thought would fit and actually it was a good gamble it fit pretty perfectly so I'll just tell you a little bit about the dress um, you'll see on the pattern packet that it's four different you have four different versions of it and again I made this the C which is a straight shirt dress. I'll insert a full picture of it. So maybe if I bring my camera back a little bit you'll see more. Yeah, there we go. So it's on the mannequin that I have set up, which is pretty much my size. Um, it's got patch pockets on the front. The pattern has hip pockets as well. Now I cut them out but I thought I may or may not add them. I don't generally add them in something like this um, because they just get too bulky. And I'm already a 10, a 12 and a 14. So I don't really want to make the 14 look any bigger than it is. So I did, I cut them out. I tried it on and I decided no, I wouldn't add them. 
So it's got short sleeves. They're actually a really nice length. I feel quite conscious about my arms. They've gone very flabby and bingo-y and I don't like a very short sleeve. So but that's a personal thing. But the length of these is really, really nice. On the back, it's, oh, it's got the, it's got the yoke, which I really like. And on the back, it's got the gathers. So this is another reason I decided to go for a 10 and a 12. I thought I'm going to have loads of room back here. And it's actually, it's actually gathered. I felt it gathered really, really nicely. And it's got a straight across hem and I decided to put snap fasteners and I did the top stitching in a goldy yellow colour and I think the top stitching turned out really nice. It's been a while since I've done an actual two-piece shirt collar so I really really took my time on this and it worked out really really nice. I am really pleased with the way it turned out. It does feel a little slightly too big when it's on me so I'll take that into account for the next time. It's got loads of top stitching on it and I must say I really enjoy doing that. I did two rows around the pocket and I did it down the front and on the sleeves and I did it also on the hem. It's around the yoke, around the collar. I used a Gutterman thread number 968. It's just a normal spool. It's not any thicker than anything. And that worked out really nice. I thought it was a good match to the snap fasteners. Now the first thing to do on the dress is to put the pockets on. So making the pockets was easy. Then attaching the pockets was another matter. There's only a point of reference for the two top points of the pocket and this dress has a bust dart and the bust dart actually goes into the pocket so it was a little bit of a faff because obviously you've put in shaping for the bust and then you have to attach the pocket so the pocket actually I think takes some of the shape of the bust it almost flattens the bust point so I'm not very big busted I don't need a lot of room here but if you are bigger busted then some of your bust shape and f fit has actually gone into the pocket. Um, when I have it on, there's a little bit of gathering up here because obviously some of the fullness has gone into the pocket. So I thought that was a bit of a weird design flaw to the pattern. Plus I found just having the two points up here made it quite difficult to make sure that the pockets were straight and symmetrical. So I pinned the pockets onto one piece and then I put that down on top of the other piece to get the other pocket to actually line up properly. And it seems to have worked well. I think if they were crooked, it would be very, very obvious by the time the dress was put together. So yeah, I thought that was a bit of a funny one. The second thing to do then was to put the yoke on and the gathers at the back here. What I found was where they had to match up. It was almost too far apart. I didn't end up with many gathers at all. So I actually gathered within a smaller area and did my top stitching, which I just love. I decided to just do one row of top stitching rather than two. Um. After the pockets and the yoke are on, the next part to do is the collar. Now, I don't generally stay stitch around a neck because I'm actually, I'm actually quite good at not overhandling fabric so that I'll stretch it. And the, o the only instance that I've had really of stretching a neckline is on this lovely cardigan where I had to do some unpicking and therefore stretched everything out of, out of place. And because I was aware of this, of it happening on this one, I actually stay stitched this neckline just in case because the fabric is quite fine and I thought it might be easy to stretch out the neckline. So I followed the instructions for making the two-part collar to the letter from the instructions and then when I went to attach it to the bodice um, I found that the collar was far too big for it so I unpicked the stay stitching and then it worked in perfectly. So maybe I just gathered it in too much when I was doing my stay stitching but yeah that actually came together really nicely. I did my top stitching on it and I'm really pleased with it because it's a long time since I've done a two-part collar 
I do think that the collar is a little bit too big but I'll adjust the pattern for the next one. Then the next thing to do was to, um, I sewed the side seams, decided to leave out the pockets and then went to attach the sleeves. So I've been playing around with some markers lately and some ways of um, pinpointing my notches. So generally when I cut my notch I do like a little snip into the fabric and then it comes to overlocking and that snip has disappeared. So I used this actual marker for marking where my notches were. And by the time I went to attach it to the bodice, into the armhole, this had disappeared. <laughs> so I had to go and mark out my pattern on top of it again, find my notches, and then I used my chalk pencil. I've also been using this marker recently as well, so I'm finding this is an air erasable pen. Now, Anne Marie was telling me that there's a washable erasable pen, which I think I need to get. This one, I've used this quite a lot lately, and by the time I go to actually make the garment, it's disappeared. So I think that's pretty useless. This, as I say, had disappeared within about five minutes. Um, the chalk pen is great. It lasts longer, but sometimes I find I, I rub it off. But yeah, this, this is definitely the most effective one for me. So if you have any tips on markers, please add it to the comments. I would be just delighted. Now I found adding in the sleeves, there was a lot of ease, loads of ease. Now I actually quite like adding in sleeves. I really enjoy playing with the ease. Um, I found this one very challenging to get it in without any, any puckers, but yeah, I got there. Once I had my barks done again, the sleeves went in really lovely. Now the only thing I did different on the sleeves is, rather than sew up the inside seam and then turn up the two lots of hem, I actually turned up the hem first and then did the side seam because I find I find I have extra weight on the tops of my sleeves. Sometimes I do a full bicep adjustment, but most of the time I have my other little ways of getting around it. So I find from experience that if I do the centre seam and then turn up the seam, turn up the hem, sorry, it, it gets quite thick in here and then I lose some of the width of the sleeve. So I find if I turn up the hem first and then do the inside seam, I have that little room for adjustment as well so that I can get into my side seam and kind of let it out a little bit if I need. So yeah this worked out really lovely and again I did my top stitching. So I decided to do the snap fasteners down the front because I'm just absolutely in love with snap fasteners at the moment. I bought this little kit of snap fasteners and I am um, down to, I think there, there was 30 sets of each in it. I've done a little tutorial on this and rather than add it into this video I'm going to set it in as a separate video so you can check it out. That'll just be easier if I mention it in another video at another time. People at least can check out the tutorial. So it came with 30 sets of each colour and I'm down to two, four, seven sets now of the gold so I think I'm going to have to put in another little order for this. These are so easy to, to do. The kit came without the instructions but I figured it out and as I say I've done a little tutorial for it. So yeah I'm loving these. It came with a pattern for a fabric belt which I didn't make because I find sometimes with the fabric belt it, it I feel more like it's a dressing gown so I just don't like that look so I've just added a little brown leather belt. Um, I turned up a three inch hem on the bottom and turned up the three inch and then added one and a half into it again so it's actually quite a nice wide hem at the bottom which is almost similar to this hem here. So yeah overall I just absolutely love it. I really like the fit of it. I think I'm going to make another one again but in one of the other styles so I think I'm going to make one in the full skirt. I actually think for my size and shape uh, a little break between the top and the skirt actually suits me better. I haven't got a lot of waist, <laughs> so I find this doesn't give me a massive amount of shape, but I do find if I put a seam here between the bodice and the skirt, 
it just makes my figure look better. So I think I'm going to make a view B which has a fuller skirt and I have a fabric in mind. And this is the fabric I'm going to use for view B. So it's a cotton fabric. There's a nice little bit of stretch to it. It's got a lovely royal blue and white stripe with cranes of various formations. We have them flying, they're standing up, there are two of them together. I think it's really, really nice. I think it's going to work out lovely. There's a nice grey in among the feathers. So I think the silver snap fasteners will be lovely on this. Or I may do buttons, but I'm really loving snap fasteners at the moment. And I think if I had a white belt with a silver buckle on it, it would be really nice in it. I love So I'm going to make view B, which is that one there. So it's got a mandarin collar on it, but I'm really liking this two-part collar. So I think I might do the two-part collar instead. I think it would be just that little bit nicer. I'm not sure, we'll see. It's got the same sleeves and it's obviously got the belt, which I'm going to leave out. And it's got a lovely flow to the skirt. I have three metres of this fabric and this says it only needs uh, about two and a half, less than. And you know what I'm like when it comes to cutting out patterns. I'll probably get a pair of trousers out of what's left over. I'll definitely get something else out of this. This is really lovely. I got this from the Crafty Studio. I will, of course, leave a link below to it. Um, it's very, very nice. There's a nice body to it. So I think it'll be really, really lovely in this. So I hope you enjoyed my little chat about my latest make. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified of any of my videos. And yeah, if you like this, give it the thumbs up. <laughs> um, I always forget to say those kind of things at the end of a video. I just get so carried away having a chat, telling you about things that, yeah, I, f I forget to do those kind of things. But anyway, look at Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.